let's learn how to reduce the apparent frame rate of your Instagram filter. All right, so to create this reduced frame rate effect, I just have here a new blank project. And now most of what we are going to be doing will be in the patch editor. So I'm going to come up to view, show hide patch editor, and go ahead and expand that out. Now, uh, there are a few things I would need to add before I start adding patches. So I'm going to come over to my scene panel, select device, and I want to click on this arrow next to render pass to create a device patch. And so this will be the screen output. So this ultimately will be what we see on the screen. So now I have no signal because nothing's connected. Now, if I come over to camera, I also need to do a texture extraction to get the camera texture. And now that will show up in the assets panel. So I'll just drag that in. Now, if I connect that, uh, we're actually right back to how we started. Now we have exactly the camera sees now coming into our screen output. So that's not very exciting. So let's go ahead and get started with the actual effect. The first thing I'm going to add is a delay frame patch. So what this does is it will essentially save what has previously been rendered by the filter and allow us to reuse that. So how that's going to work is we're going to initially connect our camera texture into this first frame input. So this is going to be just the first time around. We don't have anything previous to work with, so we're just going to send the camera texture uh, into the first frame. And then this render pass is we're going to, where we're going to be able to reuse previous, previously rendered textures or frames. So we can't just connect um, a texture directly to that. So we first need a shader render pass. So let's add that, we'll connect that there. And then the input to this, we need two things. First we're gonna do is add a receiver. And here we're gonna click this drop down and select delay frame. So what's happening is this delay frame is saving the output and then we're gonna send it back over to this receiver and then we can pipe it back in. So if we connect that there, now we don't see really anything too exciting going on. So what I'm going to do is also add a mix. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect our camera texture here, our delay frame here, stick that into the shader render pass. And now if we come back up to our screen output, I'm just going to copy this uh, delay frame receiver and connect it. And now we'll still see nothing going on here, but we can mess with this alpha and start to modulate what's going on. So with the mix patch, uh, we have the two inputs that were mixed together. A value of zero means we are entirely using our top input, which is just the camera texture. If we change that now to one, now in our preview, in the simulator, it all stops. That's because we're using our delayed frame. So let's change this to 0 0.8. Now you can see this motion blur effect. Uh, this is actually an example shader um, patch setup from the Spark AR documentation. Uh, just to show you kind of how to use the delay frame. So what's going on is we're taking your camera texture and we're mixing it with a previously rendered frame and then we're passing that in and showing that on the screen so that's how we get this motion blur effect so that's not what we want but now that we have a way to switch between a live view and a previous view we can start bu building out the rest of the effect uh, so also uh, just for my example I want uh, this to kind of be like an old vintage camera so I'm gonna go ahead and make this black and white so I'm going to add asset, search AR library, and I want to 
use the adjust colors patch. So all you need to do is import free and close this out. I'll pull that in and I'll just connect it here in between. And I'll set my saturation to negative one. And now we have a black and white output. All right, so I have the black and white part. Now let's get our reduced frame rate. Uh, the Instagram filters, uh, if you see here, it the goal is for them to run at about 30 frames per second. But um, those vintage cameras weren't recording at 24 frames per second. So we want to slow that down without actually affecting the frame rate of the actual filter. So how we're going to do that is we're just going to switch this alpha between 0 and 1 at a certain rate. And so we'll just be freezing the frame for a certain amount of time, grabbing the current camera frame and freezing it, and just doing that over and over again to create our effect. So let's slide over here. So our mix patch is gonna be last in line. And let's get started. So I want to do a loop animation of that patch and I want it to run for one second. So the reason I want this is because we have this progress output. So this will output a value between zero and one and it'll take one second to go from zero to one. Now what I'm gonna do with that, I'm gonna add a multiply patch. I take that progress in, I can multiply it by 30 and now that's giving us the progress um, through the frames per second. So the filters are running at exactly 30 frames per second, uh, but this is close enough. It'll give us a good looking result. Now, something like frame 12 and a half doesn't make much sense. So we're gonna add a floor. So that'll just turn all these values coming in with decimals into integer values. So we'll have frame zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Um, we'll get to frame 29 and then we'll start back over at 30. All right, so now that we have that, our next step is to add a modulo patch. So how the modulo works is it does a division, but instead of giving you the answer, it gives you the remainder. So let's take a look at this. Uh, so if we connect the floor, now we can see we have just integer values. Now for our second value, anything, so one uh, goes into every number, every integer uh, cleanly. So our modulo will always be zero because there's no remainder when you divide by one. So let's change that to two. Now this will give us a value of zero for all the even numbers. Two divided by two has no remainder, four divided by two has no remainder, whereas five divided by two has a remainder of one because you get two plus two is four uh, and you can't put a whole two back in, so you end up with the remainder of one. So using that information, uh, we can kind of decide how quickly uh, we update the frame here. So if we're looking at uh, when our modulo value is equal to zero, so let's just go ahead and add an equals patch. I'll pipe this in so we can see what our values are. Uh, so we're switching between zero and one. So if we want to go ahead and update our view every time it's zero, we cut our frame rate in half to 15 frames per second. If we bump this up to three, now 30 divided by three is 10. So now we're gonna have 10 frames per second. So you can see our modulo here will be zero, one, two. Um, because once you get up to three, you divide evenly again. So you can either have a remainder of two or of one or of zero if it's an even division. So now that we have this equals, I'm gonna slide these patches over just a little bit because we need one more. So let's add an if then else. So if we have our condition met, then we want to pass a value of zero uh, so that our mix grabs the camera texture. 
otherwise we'll pass a zero of one. So that would just show our delayed frame. So now let's hook that up. And if we watch this closely, we'll see it's a little more jittery. It's not as smooth. So if I change this to one, it's normal. We don't have any dropped frames. Now let's go extreme. Let's change this to 15. So essentially two frames per second. And now you can really see that it's not changing all that frequently. So this part is working. And if this is all we want to do is just change the frame rate, uh, we are all done. That is the whole effect. So let's just go over this really quickly, what we've done. Uh, we added a delay frame. Uh, we got our shader render pass, pass set up uh, to pass in information. Uh, we made it black and white. And then we kind of generated an artificial frame rate of 30 frames per second. And using the modulo, uh, we can use that to adjust how often our frame updates. So this is pretty good as is. Uh, but let's say uh, we want to add like some grain to really get that old camera look. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to add a rectangle. Now I have a whole separate tutorial just on kind of finding grain and preparing it. So I won't go into that here, but I do want to set up here uh, because as we'll see in just a minute, uh, we do need to make some modifications to our patches here for it to work. So I'm going to add an asset. I want an animation sequence. I'm going to choose a file. Now I'm going to cheat and instead of choosing multiple images, I'm just going to take a single grain image and I'm going to say that it's a sprite sheet. So we'll have a grid. I saw I did over here in the textures. Once I imported that, I just selected it. And I'll say I want two rows and six columns, and so 12 sprites. All right, so I have that texture going. Now I also need to add a material for it. Just call that grain, change that to flat, and I'll grab my animation sequence. And then I'll come back to my rectangle, and I'll add my material. So here, um, in the viewport, we can see the grain, but we don't see it here in the simulator. Now, the reason for that is because we're grabbing the camera texture, and this grain is not what the camera sees, it's something we're overlaying. So, if we want this included in our effect, we need to add a little more in the patch editor, but we don't need to add too much more. So what I'm going to do is just create a scene render pass. So we can do that really easily if we click device. Um, here in render output, we'll just create a default pipeline. Now, if you have a fresh blank project, uh, this will come with the device patch and the camera texture already hooked up. But since we already have those patches, uh, we don't have them here. So all we need to do is we just need to connect our outputs to the scene render pass. So I'm going to bring this over here and we won't need this second delay frame anymore. So I'll just delete that. I'll move these guys over here. I'll connect my texture there. Now we have just our grain going on. Let's come over up to our material. Let's change the overlay to screen. So we still don't have it, our scene complete yet. That's because we need to add our shader render pass here as the background. So now our grain is included in our effect here. Um, but you might notice that our grain is updating pretty frequently. Our image isn't. So if we really want to capture that feel of an old camera, we probably want to sync those up. But that's also not too hard to do. So let's come over here. 
and to sync our grain with the frames, we're just going to take advantage of the same um, setup that we had for updating um, the frame rate. So I'm going to select my animation sequence that has the grain animation. Um, while I'm here, I'll just go ahead and click randomize, just add a little more variation. And then here in current frame, I'm going to add that. Then I'm just going to add a counter patch. So that count is going to come into the current frame. Our maximum count is 12 because we have 12 frames. And then when we are equal uh, to zero, so when it's time to update our frame rate, we're also going to take that, put it into increase. This will automatically add the pulse. And now you can see that our grain frame rate has changed a lot. And just make sure that it is synced. Let's come over here to our modulo. Let's set that to 15. And now you can see that our grain is only updating with each frame. And so now this is um, a much more accurate representation of how the grain would, behaving, would be behaving with our image. It should just update as the frame updates. So that is just about it. So you can adjust how this looks to your liking. You can adjust the grain strength. You can add a sepia look and do whatever you want. So the keys here uh, were the shader render pass into the delay frame so we can adjust the frame rate. And then also piping that into the scene render pass so that we could capture any other elements we add to the scene. Now we could have overlaid our grain purely in the patch editor because it's just a texture. But if you have something like a 3D object here in your scene, you will be needing to use the scene render pass. So we have that going, we adjusted the colors, we output that, and then all we had to do for syncing our grain was just to use our same frame rate uh, changer, just pipe that into a counter, set the current frame of our animation sequence. So it's not overly complicated. Um, you just need to know the right things to add. And hopefully this was a good introduction to kind of things you can do with the delay frame and the render passes.